Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. Today, we're going to focus in on uh, Patrice Bergeron and uh, his case for the Selkie Trophy this year and why I think he's the most deserving candidate league-wide. But on a little background, as many of you know, the Bruins are playing outstanding hockey. They are, uh, you know, obviously the reigning champs, and despite a little hiccup in the month of October, they have played way beyond expectations. You know, I knew they were going to be very good this year. Obviously, they won it last year, but I didn't think they were going to be this good. If they thrashed Calgary 9 nothing last night, um... You know, he, they're just, they're in a whole other world. Them and the Rangers are the two elite teams in the Eastern Conference. And, you know, see how that shakes up. Uh, the Bruins have been there, done that. The Rangers haven't. So we'll see what happens when the, when the games really start to matter. No disrespect to the Rangers. They played outstanding hockey and they're well coached. And they have great goal tending, but so the Bruins. And the Bruins are arguably better in all those categories. But back to Bergey. Um, playing between two youngsters, Tyler Sagan, the 19-year-old, and Brad Marchand, the 23-year-old. He's brought out the best of them. And, Bergeron's no old timer himself. He's still just 26, which is outstanding. Which is, you know, you think about it. He's been there. He's been in Boston forever, and uh, you know, he made as a rookie, a second round pick at 18, back in 03. But uh, digress. He's made those players better. Tyler Sagan is presently averaging a point a game, at 36 game, 36 points in 36 games. He had 22 all last year. Uh, marshawn has got 31 and 36, and uh, Bergeron's right between them with. Playing in all 37 games, his jersey number, ironically, uh, and has 33 points. That's where he stands on the team. That's been their best line, obviously. Um, the Lucci, Horton, and Krejci lines left a lot to be desired. But uh, league-wide, I'm going to compare him to last, the candidates from last year and the three finals. He wasn't a finals last year, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, he, he had a great year last year, and um, I know the trophies don't. Uh, postseason athletes don't merit consideration for regular season trophies, but he was great in the playoffs, obviously. Shaking off a concussion to come back and score uh, two goals in Game 7, including the Cup one for with the Bruins, was ironic. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, it looked like he was never going to play again. And uh, as someone who was at that game back in 07 when he got hurt, it uh, really meant a lot to see him not only hoist the Cup, but be able to have his name in the history books as scoring the Cup winner goal. That was really a great feeling for me. But, um, Last year's three candidates were Ryan Kessler, who Bergeron and his teammates got the better of, not only in the Stanley Cup Finals last year, but the year before at the Olympics when Bergeron's Team Canada, where he was a, a bit role player, if you will, beat uh, Kessler's USA team, unfortunately, uh, in the in the gold medal game. This year, Kessler's played 36 games, has 29 points, and is plus 11. Bergeron's better in both, obviously. Um, he's Bergeron is fifth in the league and plus minus, behind actually... He's fourth in the league behind three teammates, Sagan, Marchant, and Big Z. So it's elite company, and my, uh, Kessler's nowhere close. And, um, you know, Bergeron's face-off percentage is significantly better. Patrice is averaging uh, 58% on face-offs. Um, Kessler isn't in the top 10, just, you know, goes to show you. Uh, he's 21st in the league. Ber uh, Kessler is Bergeron's behind Jonathan Taves who's got 60%, who also is, in my opinion, a very worthy candidate for the Selkie, but he doesn't have the accolades Bergeron does. Um, so that rules out Kessler. Uh, the next candidate, the the third place finish from last year. Kessler won it last year, I meant to say. Uh, kind of let that out. He was another finalist, uh, Jordan Stahl of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Stahl has 21 points in 33 games, and it's only plus one. And uh, his face-off percentage also leaves a lot to be desired. He's uh, also outside of the top 20. Just, you know, weird. He's a great player, but he's not in the top 20 face-off percentage, and uh, his points are significantly lower than Patrice's, and his plus-minus is a lot lower. Uh, now, I understand playing without Crosby he does that to you, but it's an individual award on a team award. And uh, finally, the runner-up from last year, and they got, the man who's won three, who won three in a row coming out of the lockout, and uh, last year was the first year he didn't win a post-lock. Oh, no. Brenda Moore won it the first few years after the lockout, then Dotsuk won three, and then... Uh, Kessler won last year. We'll talk about Brenda Moore at the end and why, why I see a lot of his game in Bergeron's. But, um, Pavel, Dotsuk's outscoring Bergey, uh, 40 to, he's got 40 points. Like I said, Patrice only has 33. But, uh, his plus minus is plus 13, which is also very, very good. But it's only half what Bergey's is. And, uh, his faceoff percentage, he is 13th in the league, which is his jersey number. Obviously, and uh, Pavel's a very worthy candidate. Leads the league in takeaways this year and every other year. He's you know, obviously adept at that, but he doesn't bring the grit and tenacity Bergey does. You know, just looking at the plays last night he's making when the game was out of reach. You know, the effort he's putting forward every single shift. You know, you can't teach that in a hockey player. You're just born with that. And Dotsuk's got some of that, but he, Dotsuk's hands are just outstanding. That's why he has so many takeaways. But 
He's not Bergeron. I'm sorry. And I love Dotson. Great player, great defensive player, and a great role model for young players to look up to because he plays the game right just like Patrice does. But he's you got to rule him up. It's Ber- Bergeron's better than all three candidates in at least one category or another. And he's just he's been the best player for the Bruins this year. He, and he really and truly is finally starting to turn into the, the preeminent two-way player that he's hyped up to be. And he's shown flashes that in the last two years where I thought he should have been a finalist. And this year, he's head and shoulders above the rest. You know, Jack Edwards, every single night, is hyping up how he should be a Selkie Trophy candidate. And, you know, Richard's like, all right, Jack, we get it. But now I'm looking at it going, how can he not be, how can he not win it? You know, how many guys put forth the effort he does? How many guys lead that team in short hit and ice time months forwards that are also, you know, the top 20 in scoring? You know? How many guys win 58% of that face-offs, block shots, take hits? You know, how many guys are wearing letters at the age of 21? You know, on an original six team, no less. You know, I love Bergey. I love what he does for the Bruins. And uh, the NHL 36 was just a great in, um, insight into what he does on a day-to-day basis. He's a leader on that team. Him and Big Z are the, the preeminent. And um, who's wearing the A now, Fabs? Ferentz, whoever's wearing the other A, I forget. It's on my mind. But it's him. Uh, he's... And I love Z to death. He brought us a cup, but he's the he's the leader of that team, you know. I, I love him, and I, I can't, he can't do enough good things for the team. And um, you know, this year, he, like I said, the injuries in the past, the concussion that made him miss a full season. I, I was at that game. I thought his career was over, but you know, he's come back and become an even better hockey player. His uh, his second year in the league, two years before he got the major concussion, he had I think was it seventy five points. 73 points, and you know the next year had 70 points, was minus 28, which is ungodly like him. And he's slow to recover because he had 39, 52, and last year 57 points. And this year he's really, even if he doesn't put up 80 points, he does so much more than that. He's the full and complete player. That's why he's on the Canadian Olympic team in 2010. You know, he he arguably was Canada's worst forward, if if you will. I don't think bad forwards come from Canada. You know, they got, he made it over Stamkos, Marty San Louis, Le Cavalier. Joe, he made it over Jordan Saul. You know, he made it over so many great players because of what he brings night in and night out. And Steve Eiserman saw that in him. And, um, you know, he reminds me a lot of Rod Brindamore. Like I said, he robbed the bod, was a two time Selkie winner, and uh, was great on the faceoffs, played a great defensive game, but also helped out at the offensive end. And um, the Selkie Trophy, the exception of the, the uh, Chris Draper one, has always gone to a, a high scoring forward. You know, Kessler had 75 points last year. Dots looks obviously a lock for 80 to 100 points every single year. So and you you can't rule Patrice out in his offensive numbers because they're there too. So yeah, I, I hope the NHL voters see this and agree with me that he's the best defensive. He's the most complete forward in the NHL right now. I can't say enough about how much of a 200 foot game he plays. You know, that's all I can say. And he's a reblock player. So Mike and Gav making you money too. Uh, I'm just kidding, guys. But like I said, Bo Patrice Bergeron for the Selkie. The man deserves it. Say that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for more more episodes of the Power Play with CJ Throughout Hockey.